All right. Uh, well, welcome to Spellstorm Miniatures. This is our very first episode of our podcast. Hi, Dan. How are you today? I'm doing all right. Hanging in there. Awesome. Very good. So we just did a a uh, sound check, and we're kind of going at it blind. I'm looking forward to hearing what it sounds like uh, on the other side. I hope that uh, I hope that all of you out there in listener land uh, are going to appreciate our podcast. Dan, what are we doing here today? Uh, I think we're basically going through our, our introduction and kind of getting our, our feet wet, um, putting ourselves out there and to basically talk about some games. Um, that's and, right. That's right. We are two average dudes who play games and we just like to talk about them. We like to talk about them so much that uh, we decided to start our own podcast. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. So Dan, uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, your gaming history. What kind of games uh, do you like to play? Have you enjoyed playing? And uh, bring us up to speed because uh, we want to introduce ourselves to our audience. They don't know us yet. So Dan, why don't you go first? Indeed. So kind of I started back in the day of you know elementary, middle school, kind of D and D, and brought it up from from there. Ended up starting playing a little bit of BattleTech with some friends, Shadowrun. Pathfinder, a lot of those games, and then kind of took a little bit of a break and got back in by playing some Hero Clicks by, of course, Uriah here and another friend, Ron, who were playing, uh, I believe, a bunch of Frost Giants versus Sentinels, and so I decided, all right, this looks kind of cool. Let's get into it. Oh, man, was that your first game you ever saw on yes. the table of Hero Clicks? Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, man. I remember that game. That was epic. That was like 3,000 points. It was all colossals, and and I think I had like a couple giants just to uh, make the points the same. Right. Oh my goodness, I remember that. That was like one of my most favorite games of Heroclix of all time. Yeah, <laughs> so that hooks me on in. And then uh, played that for a while, and then again, kind of a little bit of a break with kids and all, and then next thing I know, I get suckered in by a guy at work. I'm talking to him, and he's like, hey, I've got this uh, starter from Signar, that I've just got sitting around from Mark III when it launched. I go, okay, fine. You know, I'll take the first first hit, put it together, start playing a little bit, start playing with Jeremiah a little bit, and uh, next thing you know, I'm, you know, expanded off into Signar, um, rolling off into Trolls a little bit, played some Minions now, so mm -hmm. it's just kind of uh, last year has been, been branching off pretty hard. <laughs> oh man, it's been a roller coaster this last year, actually, uh, with, uh, with War Machine, picking up all of the extra all of the stuff <laughs> that's out there. Oh man. Well, um, so for me, you know, I'm a I'm a father and uh, and I'm a gamer. And so most of the games that I play are the games that I play with my kids. And uh, my kids are a little bit older. And uh, and so uh, we started with uh, with a board game. Started with Settlers of Catan. That's the one that kind of changed the world for us. And then and then we started playing uh, Star Wars. Miniatures. This was the old Wizard of the Coast. They were using a. Uh, uh, it was the same kind of rule set that they had for the D and D miniatures game, and uh, and so they're pre painted figures, and they had a stat card, and and I think that's what really got us started. Um, a guy at work. Uh, we we made a trade. I traded uh, uh, a Conan the Adventurer like action figure. He stood like eight inches tall and it had like all the the cool doodads, and it was still you know, in the plastic and potentially a collector's item. And so, but my, my guy, my, my friend at work, he was just like, Hey, um, I got this thing. Maybe you and your kids want to play. Well, you got something to trade for it. And I was like, sure. Yeah. So I gave him the, the Conan thing, you know, and then he gave me a, um, hero clicks starter box. And so for the next 10 years, I was devoted to the plastic crack as we once, once described it as, that. And, uh, and, and so Ron, our mutual friend, Ron, um, uh, plays, plays War Machine. And so when Mark III dropped a couple of years ago for War Machine, you know, uh, I, I found him, we, we, we randomly found, found each other in the store and, and I was just kind of looking at it and he was just like, Hey, you should play this game. And I was like, Oh man, if I play this game, I'm not going to have any, are you going to play with me? Cause I don't want to, I don't want to buy this game. I don't have anyone to play with. And so uh, he said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll play with you. I'll play with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so, so I, bought, I bought the Kador uh, starter box. Uh, and then, um, 
and then uh, and then I guess after that I quickly branched out into other miniatures games, including Frostgrave, Warhammer, Malifaux, like just. It's bad. The addiction is real. It's real. And so uh, so playing War Machine now, and my oldest son, who's in college now, he and I were the were the big Heroclix gamers. And he kind of stopped playing, and so it was really easy for me to leave that game because my favorite my favorite gaming partner, you know, stopped playing the game. Um, so my youngest now, he's, uh, he's in middle school, and he really, really, really likes War Machine. And so, uh, so we play. We actually played a, a game the other night, and uh, we probably get we try to get one game in a week, um, you know, extra just just the two of us at home. So it's kind of nice to to be able to play that. So, uh, I'm, you mentioned uh, BattleTech. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit more about BattleTech. <laughs> so I know you, that one is real. <laughs> right. Yeah. Had some good fun, and actually talking to some local guys here recently at the I five that uh, played BattleTech and pretty invested. So. Maybe start that back up again, but yeah, you know, hexagon base, little miniature, giant robots in in a one inch tall form. So good fun, but again, it's one of those that if you don't have the people around playing, hours to play, it's just hard to <laughs> yeah spin back up. So eh, eventually, but again, you know, with with the advent of you know the hero clicks and then War Machine, kind of took all my my gaming space and time and and shoving it that way. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, you know, we talked about the journey to get to War Machine. Um, I, at this point in my life, would say that War Machine is one of my most favorite games of all time. It 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 takes the uh, everything that I love about co like collectible, like building an army and and purchasing you know pieces that go for it, and then um, but then also the rule set is super clean. And it's easy for me to understand. Like my, my brain, um, it makes sense to my in my brain. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, what about you, Dan? What do you like about War Machine? Yeah, that's kind of about the same. Um, I know you're a big chess guy, but, you know, as I said, yeah. you kind of mix that almost almost chess-like along with a bit of the strategy, rolling of the dice. So it does come down to a lot of it, but a lot of the component building is kind of fun. Um, the hobby sides, of course, a good, yeah. good, exciting side of and it. And you're a good you know? painter, too. Oh, thanks. yeah. yeah. I'll take that compliment for now. We'll see. We'll post some pictures and let everyone else judge. But um, <laughs> no, I like it. Um, you know, maybe I spent a little much time painting some than I should, but you know, it's given a learning curve there too. Getting a lot of those techniques down, there's still so much for me to be able to learn to do. Um, but also, I know I spend a bit of time at the craft stores, kind of looking through the uh, floor arrangements or what can I use for basic materials, sort of thing. You know, it's hard to let a let a good fifty percent, sixty percent off coupon go. Um, got to find something. So I do enjoy that. I got a couple different projects going on for, for basing. Um, and you know, again, that's just one of the more enjoyable sides for me to be kind of express it out, make it a little bit different and get out there and then, and then the painting and then it's kind of relaxing and then just being able to get out and, and actually play with people is always fun too. kind of that challenge. And, and it really takes a lot of practice. <laughs> so. One of the things that I really enjoy about uh, the game War Machine is actually the community. Mm -hmm. And so the last couple of years, you know, heading out to the game store and meeting people and then joining the local Discord uh, server uh, has really helped me to uh, really just embrace the game more. And um, and I, I think the, the War Machine community is is just very diverse. It's, it's global. People yeah. all over the world play this game. And... Um, uh, but locally here, we, we live in the Pacific Northwest, and so we, you know, I know gamers from California to to Canada now uh, because of some some events that we participate in and things like that. But um, but I love how supportive everyone is. You know, um, I posted a picture of of my Morgul too recently, who's you know broken at the wrist yeah. and so hard to pin, and but I was able to do it, and you know, and hey, you know, the and the community recognizes the difficulty and. They give you a thumbs right. up, and it just the the, the whole attaboy makes you feel good. So, um, you know, one of the things that um, that I really like is um, is just I, I I have I have adult friends now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't just play games with my kids anymore. Right. I play games with adult friends, and it's and it's awesome. Yeah, definitely, I have to agree with you there. Is I haven't met 
met any of them that haven't been kind or willing to, you know, swap some strategy or help your list out, even though it's like making you better is going to be maybe making them lose more, but at the same time, it might make them better. And so we all kind of support up. And so I've really enjoyed that aspect of it too. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of community, um, we just recently participated in an event together, didn't we? Yep. What event did we participate in, Dan? So we did the I-5 uh, team event, which was was pretty cool. It was hosted uh, by the locally here and actually got a lot of non-local teams. It was kind of kind of a cool, fun thing. It was really my first big tournament. It was my first team tournament, um, yeah. but it was it was really it was I guess my second actually in store. Well, it wasn't even really in a store, but store hosted um, tournament. So it was a it was a giant learning curve, and again meeting just yeah. all the different people and um, yeah. So so this was a this was a team event. Yeah. So each team um, had five players, much like a, a chess championship or a chess team tournament. Um, Dan, you ref, you you mentioned chess earlier. I, I coach high school chess, and uh, and so uh, when when we do the state tournament, uh, the team format is the same way. It has five players. Um, they, they rank them a little bit differently in, in War Machine, however. Um, th this one was done um, uh, WTC style, which is what World Team Championship, uh, where, uh, where you put up pairs kind of one at a time, and, and that's how you figure out who you're going to play each other, rather than having um, uh, each team rank one through five. Yeah. And so um, it actually adds an extra level of... of um, of uh, strategy and challenge, but anyway, so the I five uh, team championship, there were sixteen teams, yeah, and so sixteen times five is what eighty, yeah, and 80 plus all the judges and and the catering, they they catered lunch and they catered breakfast on on the second day. It was held at the the Double Tree Hotel, and so there were a lot of folks, you know, like I said, traveling from Canada, traveling from California. Uh, people all over Washington and from Bend, Oregon, coming coming to Portland, and um, and it was fun. Um, our team. So this is this is my second team tournament. Um, I I participated in 2017, and our first round, we faced the team that we faced in the last round last year, and so it was it was kind of fun to to you know to see Robbie from up north and say hey do you remember me you know and. I didn't get a chance to face Robbie this year, but uh, uh, but nonetheless, we, we talked and everything. So, um, yeah, why don't we why don't we just share a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, you know, some of the uh, some of the podcasts you know that we listen to are up north or back east, and don't really know what's going on out here in the wild wild west. And so, not a lot of people talked about the I five team championship, and so this might be their first time hearing about it, and. Um, and so, sell us on it. Tell us. Um, tell let's just, let's just start talking about it. All right. Um, yeah, we can go into it. I mean, I said not too much there, except for again a good good number of teams. Like I said, the sixteen teams I know from from around, and so we're able to you know just match up. There was four rounds. Um, if there would have been a few more, would have gone tried to gone five rounds, but four I think was was enough. Uh, we did three in the first day, which again was a little little taxing. I need to work my uh, war machine stamina up a little bit, um, especially since all three of mine were pretty well grinders. Um, overall, uh, we did pretty well. We ended up uh, what, placing seventh, I believe. Our team did with a two and two record. You know, um, they're all pretty much all really close close rounds. We either lost like two three or one three two. Um, and so it's kind of that wild, wild ride where again, dice get you or just not knowing, yeah. um, or just, you know, crazy assassinations out of, out of nowhere. <laughs> oh yeah. We have some fun assassination stories to share. <laughs> um, but yeah. So yeah, like you said, each round, we, because it's a team tournament, um, we're basically, it's a best of five each round. Yeah. And so your team only needs to win three games. So if two of your teammates lose, you still have a chance of winning that particular round yeah. and and every round we were in it so round one uh we faced the team from i think seattle area yeah. i must ask you a question <laughs> that's a yeah. clever name i must ask you a question and uh, they all were wearing mustaches and they had t-shirts with mustaches on them and 
and uh, let's see, I got paired. I was playing Kador, and I had a Vlad one list with, in the Jaws of the Wolf theme, and then I had a um, uh, let's see, a Zarkova one list in the Legion of Steel theme, and I was paired up against a Grimkin player named Jeff, who actually is from our meta. Yes, but he defected and was yeah. playing on a team from up north. Well, there was a couple of those. Oh man, yeah, there were, and so. He had a killer mustache, though. Hi, Jeff. I know you're listening. And so, um, and so, uh, anyway, I dropped Vlad because I thought that um, I had I had more magical attacks to deal with the gremlin swarms from from Grimkin, and and uh, and he was dealing with some beasts. He had a lot of uh, heavy beasts on his on his team, and and I had um, and I had um, uh, you know seven heavies, you know Kador heavies, nonetheless. Um, I think I misplayed a little bit, and um, I overextended myself on turn two because I was trying to contest so that he wouldn't easily score, and in so doing, I actually offered too much too soon. Um, he was able to then come back, and, um, and and eventually he would get the assassination on me. Um, Scenario-wise, um, I, I applied a lot of pressure, and, and there was one turn in particular where I just didn't have the... Um, but my dice absolutely failed me. Um, I don't normally say that about a game, right. but there was there was uh, there was a there was that that there were two situations where uh, where I was killing someone uh, dead, but I wasn't rolling the damage. Right. <laughs> I was rolling ones on damage and everything. Anyway, and so um, and so had had I been successful in killing those two um, those two models. I would have uh, I would have totally contested those zones. I would have been way up on scenario, yep. and um, and and I think it might have alternated a little bit of what he would have been doing. I don't know by how much um, because he like I said he did get the assassination on me in, in round three, but um, but it was a good game. Um, he scored um, only one CP against me in that game, and that would be the only CP that I would surrender the entire yeah. tournament. So, um, scenario was really good for me. Uh, how'd you do round one? Yeah, you're defending it pretty hard there. Yeah. Um, so you're sitting next to me and I, yeah, I heard sometimes like a comment here or there. It's just like, you know, oh, I knew the dice weren't going well for you. Um, and again, just pretty cool because I like talking with him about 3D printer stuff, which is a whole nother subject. But, um, I went in and I actually played, uh, played Eli and he was playing, uh, Animag. I guess I should say what I was playing. Um, I had a Barnabas 2 list, um, uh, basically kind of with a couple Super friends in there, um, Dahlia Scarif and Wrong Eye Snapjaw are the main ones, and sprinkle in some other beasts. And then my my other list was a uh, Maylock, which is the fairly typical one. But I was running it with a um, Blind Walker instead of the Bone Swarms, um, and then the two husks with the Min unit, and also um, two Witch Doctors. So of course I know the game started out great when I'm pulling my figures off the board and setting them on, and I. Drop my witch doc croc, the uh, the bombshell version, right? The old version. She has that arm sticking out, hanging out there. Drop it, boom, break the arm. Oh, well, I hate that. I know, and this is actually the second time I've broken that arm now, so it'll be the, the third time I'm going to paint it. So I already knew it was going to be a great game right there, right? And so, again, he dropped uh, Animag, Primal Terrors, um, you know, Lightbringer, Chosen, all that fun stuff, and so... Kind of went as similar as we thought it was going to is really really got grindy you know my gators into his his warmongers um it was a lot of a lot of back and forth a little bit pushing kind of challenging around both flags for a bit um i was able to score my or we were on um standoff probably should say that too <laughs> um and so i was able to score my zone and contest his early on i went first Standoff is that the one with yeah. uh, one circle in the middle and two square zones? Yeah, two. Uh, yeah, the two rectangles, kind of one towards each player, and then the two flags. Oh, that's spread the net, isn't or it? Spread the net. Sorry, not yeah. standoff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, getting in my head, I can. That's a live it. scenario. Yeah, it is. Sorry, I wrote it down wrong in my notes. Yeah, so, um, thank you, and and I was able to again contest his early enough as I went first and was able to run up the board. Um, his blight bringer kind of slowly came in and started wearing down a lot of my guys, uh, but I was able to wear down his flag good enough to score it fairly early on, start scoring it on my turn, and um, he had to contest, always thrown out to contest, and the Hellmouths, oh man, those Hellmouths are uh, something to deal with. I was able to get one of them, but that second one just kept popping that tentacle and contesting my flag. Um, 
but either way it, it started grinding down getting uh, pretty late in the turn I'm I'm still a bit of a slow player so I think third turn I had like 20 30 minutes left at, at the end of it so not very much and um, as we were going around he was collapsing his his square zone kind of closing out on my flag while I was kind of getting his flag and his blight bringer came in on my zone so I just could not clear it um, and really I looked back and kind of did the math afterwards like everyone else's tables are pretty much finishing we're like down to like 12 minutes roughly on each person's clock we were pretty well even and he was up a little bit on me and everyone's starting to circle around i'm looking you're the yeah you're the last <laughs> yeah. game in our in that round for us it's, in, it's two and two yeah so it's coming down to me <laughs> um at that point i i was up on cp like uh, like one and so we were kind of circling the board and i did some quick math not realizing that i could probably take the bright bringer down with my blind walker and with my wrestler if i if i got the mortality got the rage up i just i just couldn't do the math in my head that fast worried about time and uh, um, as a quick note, later on, one of the other, one of the local guys was kind of mentioned to me. He's like, "Always oh, just think about point cost. You know, if like your two guys are about the same point cost, maybe your heavies should be able to get into it pretty good." So, have to make that little. Oh yeah, that's that, a good little mental yeah, tip. I'll be pointing that one out. And so, either way, he started dominating the board. It like I said, it circled around, and I kind of kept contesting the middle a little bit. He eventually would start scoring that, start scoring his zone, and I pretty much fell um, nine, his nine CP to my seven CP at the bottom of turn seven, um, where I had 12 seconds left on my clock. And I think I was just so happy to get through all the turns where actually I look back, like we might've actually came closer to tying CP if I would just clocked <laughs> instead, or, you know, left it. You have to double check on how all that works. I think you count the CP even if you if you clock right yeah when, when you clock yeah um what you do at that moment is you check the board state and um and so cp that you score yeah. will score but i would but, lost. but the question <laughs> is is yeah do you do that i think it triggers after the right the clocking so which would count as sort of a, an assassination and your opponent will get 10 army points right uh, for getting your your caster so i think that comes first and then you check the board state yeah exactly so either way um you know it kind of Kind of one of those things. It was it was just a it was a grind over battle. It was really cool first time playing into it, um, and yeah, it was really exciting. Down, I was just again so ecstatic that I actually made seven turns <laughs> in yeah. sixty minutes. Like, and I was, scored so many CP. <laughs> it was a righteous game. Right. You know, I I was challenged. I thought that our captain uh, would uh, would would drop me into Legion, yeah, um, and not you, but uh, but you had a nice grindy list right. that was. Yeah, well, he actually made the last minute choice because he, he kind of whispered over to me. He's like, you played Grimkin before. I was like, oh, I've played Old Witch. I've never actually played a straight Grimkin game. Oh. And so he's like, oh, the Arcana, you might not know that well, and actually switched us yeah. at the last minute. Probably a better call. I I, I think, um, like I said, I I, th I messed up my game against against Jeff, but um, um, but I think I would have had a better a better shot maybe with all my magic weapons and whatnot. Yeah. So, so that puts us um, almost to the fun bracket, right? You know, that's that's, that's the yeah. that's the that's the <laughs> idiom, the phrase that we're using, right? Um, but so we, we lost round one. Uh, round two, we went up against a team. What's what was their Mom's name? Mom's basement. Mom's basement, and they were one of the Ben teams. Yes, um, they yeah, because um, they were also I think the uh, Prairie Winkle Pandas who we faced next were from the same area, I believe. Yeah, so we, yeah. we faced two Ben teams. Yeah, so. Um, uh, so I'm gonna go first because mine is yep. super short. Um, <laughs> I uh, I was dropped into Signar, and um, and I can't remember. You're gonna have to help me out here. Yeah. Uh, was it Striker? Did, did they have Striker? Is that the one that has the uh, the pew pew pews? Oh, they're all shooty, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're pretty much Signar has a lot of shooties. Yeah. So. Anyway, I haven't I haven't faced Signar in like months, so I I totally forget what Signar does, and so I drop um, Zerkova. And uh, so they can see through clouds, yeah. and they can e leap, and they can get all around. So uh, you know, so we both. Uh, I think he deploys, I deploy. There's a big, you know, there's a big uh, house in the middle, and I, I drop some flags to get my iron thing pikeman delivered. And uh, and so he advances. Uh, what an ironclad is that? One of the shooting. Yeah. 
You uh, know, no, um, you know. He, he has the big hammer. Okay, not ironclad. Then. Yeah, maybe a Lan- lander or something. Lancer, or, Lancer I don't know. has the spear. Oh, I, it's like know, I said, I don't know. Sigmar. Cyclone has the chain guns. You know, uh, yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. He went on the right side of the building and went pew pew pew, and then he went on the left side of the building and he <laughs> went pew pew pew, and Sir Kobo took a nap, a long, deep nap. And uh, it up until that moment, it was the shortest game of War Machine I'd ever played in my life, and um, and so uh, the guy next to me from the Ben team just kind of after he kind of looks over and see what we did, he leans over to me and he goes, "He's our best player." <laughs> and so, and so, um, so I I don't know if that made me feel better or worse, uh, but uh, but I I was pretty embarrassed about that, so I just kind of. Walked around and um, and watched you guys all play. Uh, your your game was much better than my game. You actually it, had a game. Yeah, another another crazy grinder. <laughs> no, yeah, yours is kind of like you said that that funny of just like oh man, you know. Now at this point, I've played uh, in one game more than you've played all day. Um, That's true. My yeah. my actual table time is like for the whole for all four rounds is like an hour and twenty right. minutes. Just a little foreshadowing for you. Yeah, you're gonna love round four, you guys. <laughs> Um, so so mine was uh, going against uh, Spencer and he was running uh, Protectorate again a faction I have never played into so I dropped Maylock why not Um, he dropped I believe Kriath 2 in uh, Exemplar Interdiction I think it is Um, the one with a bunch of dudes um, Bastions and and some Exemplars in there and so this time he won the roll I ended up going second which was a little bit challenging as he was able to advanced deploy, get up kind of in my face a little bit. Um, and when I came back at him, I was able to not do too much on the first turn, but I was able to get some of the gators, gators going up there. Um, and he had mini feeded his exemplars. So it made it, so I couldn't mortality them. Well, that's no, that's no fun trying to do a long charging gators. And so again, it kind of went down to that, that grindiness of where, um, I was able to go up one flank, um, and we were doing the, um, oh, what's the champ belt? Um, circle in the middle, rectangles on the side. And then two objectives, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't remember the name of it. The pit? Yeah, is that, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's like champ belt. Yeah. But, um, so, again, I was able to, to kind of close in, and with the gators, they had a high enough armor that... I, I went up and I stayed out of his range, and then he kind of came in a little bit again, and then really enabling me to get a lot of the first strike, but he had um, cast a spell that pretty much when I take out one of his guys, my guy gets knocked down. Mm. So, I was like, great. Mm. Well, at least unyielding counts uh, when you're knocked down. But his blessed weapons was another thing that started getting to me because my death pact didn't do nearly as much good mm. um, because there wasn't my plus two armor there, so... Hmm, bummer. Um, but I was able to really, again, close that, the right side, which had the, um, oh, I can't remember what, but they have the defensive strike. Um, I can't remember which unit those guys are, but, you know, big tanky type guys. I was able to really start baiting out a lot of the defensive strikes and then get in with my other units to start chewing his guys down. And so I, within a couple turns, I was able to get that flank down per side. I ended up getting a husk into his, um, I think there's incinerators is what those were on his other side. And then just kind of bogged that zone down so much that neither one of us really made any progress. Um, and then just kind of up the middle dealing with random, random errants, um, as they kind of came. And so of course I forgot to feet once I closed in, I forgot to feet. So he's able to come back at me and again, kill like eight gators in one turn. I was just, Oh, I was I was kind of kicking myself. Um, I think a lot of his roles, I tell myself, were high enough that it didn't matter. But oh man, um, either way, this one again was kind of grindy. I was able to start scoring that right zone. Um, I, got my, uh, I got my bull snapper snuck in there. I eventually took out one of his heavy jacks with my wrestler, which then died on the retaliation. But hey, it, it soaked it in. Took out one of his big guys, um, blind walker. Just a tank was able to sit in the zone even with his beat back, and he. And he tried doing it later on to clear out the zone. He just couldn't beat me back far enough and, and kill that blind walker. That I was able to go up on scenario enough um, to where at the end of the game, again, this one went seven turns, I was able to get um, four CP out of it, so to his zero. So I was able to stop him enough and distract in. Um, and the, really, the I'll fast forward a lot of the grind, grind, dice, dice. 
and it came down to um, his seventh turn. I think I had like 14 seconds left, right? Hmm. Um, and in going second, all I did, I guess I could just click the cock back over and call it good. You know, luckily they don't have that 15 second rule anymore. But um, he came in. I cl I tossed the clock over so fast that I forgot to block charge lanes to Maylock. And he had, I think, like two minutes left. Like it was really low. I can't remember exactly what it was. But he he charged in with a couple of the small guys, didn't really do much. And then one of his bigger jacks comes in, lands a gruesome hit. I think he literally did like 14 damage. Wow. Yeah, which was just going to be insane. Well, he forgot my bull snapper was hiding out with my posse. I guess maybe they look too similar out in the zone, so I scored in that zone, right? And so I transferred over and I just saw his face like, oh man. Like, totally forgot that I had that, that bull snapper over there. And so I kicked that transfer over because no way I want to take 14 damage to the face. And now he's running low on his clock's like really low. His other jack charges in that has, I think he charged, or he put a little bit more focus on it. Charges in, swings, misses with his, uh, I think it was a flail or something like that. Misses that attack. And now he's kind of looking a little defeated because... You know, Maylock's in pretty good at armor. He rolls for the shield bash, lands the shield bash, and as he's rolling the damage for that, clock goes off. He clocks out, and um, even with the damage of the shield bash, it wasn't enough to to take out Maylock. So it was kind of a that <laughs> really dreadful for me. I thought I messed up the game entirely, which mm. I, on an average dice roll, you know, maybe would have. But if I would have just, you know, ran a couple guys to block that lane, I could have you know, been a lot safer, but, um, so I, I barely, barely, I think squeaked that went out. Um, and, and, uh, was kind of crazy again, you know, seven turns, I guess, well, not quite seven turns for me, I guess, technically since I was second, but either way, again, long grindy one, it's lunchtime. Everyone else is eating. I'm watching other people eat <laughs> while this is going on. Right. And I'm just thinking, Oh, come on, man. Yeah. Um, and then for yeah. the round, uh, so you had a yeah. long game. Uh, for the rounds, uh, we lost that game two to three. Yeah. Um, was is yours the long game that round, or was it Ethan? No, I had uh, that. I had the long game both rounds. Were, both rounds, okay. Yeah. And so and so yours again was the potential. No, no, yours won. So yeah, oh, I, oh, but that, that 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 time we already lost it, three. It had already basically been decided, but yeah, this one was that's what it was, was. A little over two hours. I think we even paused for a judge question at one time, so we were yeah. over two hours in our game. Yeah. Well, so yeah, so then so then we take a break and and it was a nice break. It was a nice opportunity to, uh, you know, to regroup. They had uh, they had pizza and salad and like these mm -hmm. cannellinis or whatever yeah, they're called. Yeah, stuffed pasta shells. Yeah. yeah, and I mean for for a you know a catered lunch it was pretty good and they had all kinds of beverages. My favorite part was when they brought out the coffee, yeah. and that I really <laughs> needed that for the third round, and. Um, and uh, and so we uh, so then we go into the third round, and we face the other Benny. Uh, there were uh, were there two total Ben teams or three total Ben teams? Uh, I'd have to look. You know. Yeah. Know Doesn't matter. We play. We face two of right. them. If regardless of how many, we face two. And now we're in the fun bracket for sure. And we're definitely because now we're zero and two as a team, and. Um, and so, uh, we're facing, so I got dropped into Signar again, yeah. and I was feeling so defeated from my previous Signar, um, voy uh, venture uh, in round two. Um, I actually started the round, um, just kind of, just kind of, just kind of melancholy. I was I was disappointed. I didn't I didn't get I didn't get the drop that I wanted, and I, I don't remember which one I wanted to face that round. Um, but I but I got Signar instead, and and the guy I was playing um, is super legit. He's super cool. He used to be in the Bend meta, and then moved out uh, where we are in the Portland area, and um, and so um, and so he was playing Haley two, yeah. and I ended up dropping Vlad one. And we were playing on um, the one that had the two rectangles with uh, two uh, with two flags at the corners and two objectives um, in the center. Yeah. Uh, right. Kind of the vertical vertical so, rectangles. Yeah. You zones. Got, yeah. So they kind of the perpendicular version the of flags, an equal the equal sign. Flags on the inside corners and your inside two, corner. Yeah. yeah. And so. 
Um, and I don't remember uh, who went first, but we, but it was really challenging because all of his jacks had um, had like uh, some kind of shield up that prevented me from being able to charge them. Yeah, the centurions. The centurions, yeah. and then he had two storm striders. Yep, and it was just a gnarly list, and and he was out threatening me in a lot of ways, um, and I was pinging him away with the with the widowmakers or whatever. I was able to. Um, was able to get a solo on my nearest flag, and I was able to get some Kayazis to contest his flag. And so uh, I was going up on scenario. And um, I think by the end of the game, I was up three nothing on scenario. Um, but um, but the big challenge for me was was I what I was realizing that I actually had no way of really winning this game on time or on, I mean on, on attrition because he yeah. was just he was just ping he was gonna just eat me and um and so on his feet turn he feeded and he um he rolled really high and and the number was eight and so he was able to um pick eight people in his con in his control zone or, or control area yeah. to uh to either forfeit a combat action or forfeit a move action and that's the turn. That was really the turn of the of the round because um, because then I could not contest a zone, and he was really going to be able to start fighting back. Um, but he but he I think he just made a little of a positioning error, and so what he did was he uh, what it, what does he have centurions? Is that what yeah. he had? So he had the centurions, and they were kind of in, in the dead center of the board. Um, but they, but there were two that were wide enough, like maybe maybe four five inches apart and so there was this lane dead center and and so Haley was kind of hanging out by her objective and Vlad was just kind of hanging out by his objective and so I kind of looked at Haley I kind of looked at the board and then I kind of casted blood of kings and I just kind of charged and I just kind of killed her. Just casually in there. And he, I took a free strike um, along the way from the Centurions, but they couldn't hit an 18 defense. And um, he, um, and, I, and I think it was one attack. I think it was the charge attack that, that killed her. And, um, and, and, and we both kind of looked at each other, and, and I, could not, I could not hold it in. I actually fell to my knees. I, I, I could like I, I kind of spun I did this 90 degree turn and fell to my knees because I could not believe that I pulled it off and um, and uh, and so so I, I got the assassination and um, and 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 my opponent um, you know to his credit you know he you know he, he walked away and, and a little upset I mean both of us were I think were shocked that it, that, yeah. that happened because it was obvious that the, the the game had turned and it was in his favor, and um, and so um, and so, but I just I just had enough, and so that's what it took, and so, um, and that uh, was not a very short game because both of us um, kind of went in the tank a little bit in terms of, for positioning on turn two I think and stuff, yeah. um, but um, but it was more of a game than my previous Signer match. And so, um, and so after that, I, I, I felt a little bit hopeful and, uh, and, and last year in the I five, I just think the game, my goal this year was to win at least one. And so I got it. Yeah. That, that was my one win. Yeah. And so, I, and so to me, I was ecstatic because I, I achieved my goal and the day good. And, the, and then, and that's, that's true. That was the last run of the day. So I ended the day good. So I just kind of walked around and smiled a bunch because yeah. I couldn't help myself right <laughs> who did you play what did you play yeah so uh, again these were the the prairie winkle pandas um, but uh, I ended up going against uh, Vlad II and armored core um, so you know I was, I was a little tempted to drop Barnabas but you know okay I've been playing Maylock let's just do Maylock again look at scenario okay you know just go again it's getting late a little easier to pilot maybe and so I drop in, I end up going first. And um, this time I felt a little more comfortable because, you know, Jeremiah plays Kador. We've played a lot of practice games. Granted, I haven't played against Armored Core, but, you know, still some of the Kador kind of understand it a little bit better, a little more comfortable on their jacks. It's a simple faction. Right, yeah. Um, 
Except for his clam jack dude who opens up and explodes. I can't remember what that one's called, but you know, he's like twenty three armor or something like the that. Devastator. The Devastator. Yeah, yeah, that thing was like that was that was giving me uh, some uh, some it, pain. It's devastating. Yeah, down yeah, slightly. <laughs> so again, kind of, I was able to put my um, bone shrine on the flag um, since it was so close and in rubble just just for fun. That way, it makes it a nine defense against shooting. Why not? I mean, come on. <laughs> um, again, didn't really matter, but hey, and so. I was able to get up the board, you know, he was kind of slowly chunking up the board as well. Um, and again, just my gators are so much quicker that I was able to really get up there and engage him. And a couple of the spots where I was able to engage really knocked his movement out of, out of whack because, and some of it was just actually by, this, I just ran into engage because it's like, I'm going to pass down. And in order to move, he'd have to take free strikes. So a lot of the time he decided, I'm not going to take free strikes. I'll just deal with this one gator or two gators. Um, same with the Devastator. I I just kept throwing, trying to throw a gator at him, just put a gator in front of him. So he has to try to do something and just take that one gator out, just to slow down the momentum. Because um, I didn't know how I was going to destroy that jack if, if it came to it. Um, but again, that one I was able to just, a lot of times push contest his flag was so much that even even under his feet and everything he just couldn't couldn't clear out the massive amount of gators i had within four inches of his flag um zones were never scored because those were just so well contested um i couldn't really get close to his it never really got close to mine uh, but i was able to just keep scoring my flag scoring my flag every every turn scoring my flag you know after that second turn and so he eventually after i've eaten down a lot of his forces i just kept you know the gators just kept munching in, mortality in his shock troopers and just munching, munching, munching. Um, and again, a husk coming in from the other side to take out the, the man of war on the other side. And, you know, he destroyed that and exploded in his face, which again, I don't know if he realized it was going to do that, but just big corrosive cloud. And he eventually notices and kind of looks and goes, huh, okay, it's four to zero. It's his turn. He hasn't contested my flag. Um, his devastator comes in, um, pushes it, um, but it, did not end within four inches of my flag, mm -hmm. so it wasn't contesting. And, you know, we talked about it after the fact that maybe he could have, if he would have done it slightly differently, he might have been able to get that Devastator, and then we would have had to grind it out towards the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, but his, um, uh, what's the, the solo with the big cannon, the siege weapon cannon on its back. Oh, yeah, those are the new, is it the yeah. suppressor? Yeah, is it the suppressor? Yeah, not so, because the suppression no. has the, um, Oh, yeah. that, those sprays kept hitting my gators. He would yeah. spray down my gators like mad. Um, I don't know. I haven't picked up the Man of War stuff right? yet, so I'm oh, still, geez. yeah. And Slacker Kator player. Right? Um, so anyway, that guy, he he launches one shot into my bone shrine, obliterates that shrine, just destroys it in one hit, right? <laughs> and so I couldn't score, but he didn't have anything else that could come in close enough. And so he passes his turn, and I kind of look at him, and we basically, I go, so all I have to do is run my, because he killed my other solo, my witch doctor that was over there. So he, I didn't have any solos near the flag. But I was like, so I have my warlock here. I can just run over to the flag, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, we kind of look at it real quick, and yeah. it was just basically shook hands at that point that he just, he knew this was uh, turn five, I believe. Um, yeah, five, five A. And so he just, he looked at just kind of like, yep. That's game. Dude, that's legit. You, you legitimately got a, a scenario win. Right. And to that's, me, I think yeah. those are like the hardest ones to get. And and that's that's props to you, dude. Right. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Again, that's my first scenario win. You know, first time going against Armored Core, but again, mm -hmm. kind of the Kador. But yeah, I mean, just first scenario win also. So I got two two games that basically went to turn seven and a scenario for the day. That's that's some history in my book. Yeah. And so, so we go home happy. We... We actually carpooled together. Captain Ron was with us, and and Eddie was with us, and so we got a chance to kind of dissect and talk a little bit. Um, I don't remember if we knew our opponent when we left or just no, they later. Told us later, later. So that night they post our opponents for the next morning, and we had as a team we had gotten together and kind of made a spreadsheet and and kind of looked at every team and decided who we would want to drop into different opponents. And so we arrived Sunday morning and uh, for game for day two of the tournament, round four. And as a team, we're one and two. Yep. 
and uh, and so we we were kind of late getting started. Um, the the tournament organizers had a few things going on, and so uh, so we didn't get started right away. And uh, and then when we uh, we started doing the pairing process, I got paired into uh, Mercs, and um, and. Well, it was really awesome. Um, well, first of all, uh, the team we got face up against was from California. Yeah. Uh, what was their name? Salt Mines Two. The S- resulting. The resulting. Excellent. Yes. And so, um, and so they, uh, so they were up from California, and um, and I was facing their Merc player, and um, and he was, he's a super chill dude, and I really like him because one of his lists was a Fexus one Cephalix list with uh, you know a million drones, or dredges. And um, and I also play Cephalix. It's oh. I, it's one of my armies. I, it's so much fun to play, and so I was thrilled to face a Cephalix player. Um, what I didn't realize, and, and we talked about this after the round, was that uh, was that um, um, down there in the Bay Area, they actually have a large Cephalix meta. There's a lot oh, wow. of players there, and so everyone knows how to play into Cephalix, and everyone knows what Cephalix does. And so he had a he had Texas one, and then his other list, I believe, was was it Osram? Uh, no, who's no. the no not Osram? Uh, Osram. Who's the who's the Rulik, uh, uh, uh caster? There's a, there's Osram. There's um, Gordon and Man of Steel. Osram. It was Osram. Yeah. But he was playing in irregulars, I think. Yeah. So he had a bunch. It, it, of, it was different. Yeah. Yeah, he had a bunch of dwarf stuff, and then because of the irregulars theme, he had some other stuff. And so I was looking at both these lists, and and to be honest, um, I thought both of them presented challenges to me um, with the, the sprays and the different things that the Cephalix can do, and then um, and then with the Ostrom list with his feet, and um, and and a lot of the they had the the gun bunnies or whatever they call them, yep. um, and you know I was like, wow, those that's that's some serious armor cracking, and so. And so um, this was a list chicken situation where I didn't know what to do, and 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 I think it confused him a little bit too, because he was looking at my Zarkova list with the clouds, and I think the clouds startled him, and so so when we revealed, he chose Texas and I chose Vlad, and both of us went what, <laughs> like. Immediately, both of us were caught off guard. We okay. we couldn't feel like it was weird. So um, let's see which uh, which scenario was this? Was this the round one? This was in invasion. the middle invasion. Okay, kind of the owl face. Yeah, the owl face. Owl face. Okay. So and we had and in our in our um, table we had um, a little forest in the center of the table, and that was the only thing that comes into play in our game. So I get my Vlad stuff out. It's a fairly small list, and it he takes forever getting all of his dredges out, and and so um, so I deploy. I'm first player. I deploy, and um, and then he deploys, and then um, and then on turn two, I kind of look at the table and I see where Texas is. Texas has come up, and he. Uh, because he's turned two, starting on you know on the six on the ten range line, you know he's he's actually more closer to the center than he would be had he went first, and um, and in front of him were a couple of monstrosities, and um, and I have Yuri hanging out behind that that center forest who has tree walker which ignores forest for line of sight and 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 different things they can move through him pathfinder and all that stuff, and so um, and so um, so. I, I asked him for a couple of proxy bases, and and we proxied um, a drudge, and we proxied the monstrosity, and then we got out our two inch reach melee, um, you know, tool, and determined that if Yuri charges the drudge, he can get an attack on Thexus, um, a thresher attack, as a thresher, and so um, and so we we confirmed. All the all the ma- um, the distances and everything, and um, and I don't know if he was very worried because it would only be one attack. Yeah. Um, but um, um, but uh, but he was. Um, but I I think he was worried enough. I think he was kind of shooting himself for positioning. Fexus was literally a quarter of an inch too far north. He's kind of a squishy caster. And oh, he's so squishy. So so there was one drudge in the way, 
And so I use my Widowmaker to to ping him, and he's gone. And so now, um, now Yuri can make the charge. So, uh, so uh, I actually, I think I activate Vlad first. Yeah. So I activate Vlad first, and uh, and Vlad um, casts Signs Importance, and um, and then the Widowmaker pings the one Drudge, and then and then Yuri charges the Drudge, and I don't even worry about the Drudge. I just make one attack against Texas. Now Texas is not my charge target, so I don't get the the, oh, the charge boost. Um, but Yuri is a weapon master, and so a, um, a weapon master under signs important. I hit, I damage. Texas is dead, and <laughs> that is the shortest game <laughs> I have ever played of War Machine, and um, because that was that was top of two assassination, and um, and that game, I mean. I, I think I only used like eleven minutes on my clock. Yeah, it was it was crazy. So fast. It was so fast, and 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 you know, and and I feel bad for the guy because he was like super cool, and and then he walked away, and then and then afterwards, you know, we got a chance to talk, and we got to talk about the hobby and things like that, and both being Cephalix players, right. you know, but um, um, but I I actually end the tournament um, two and two. And I exceeded my I exceeded my goal by by winning two games. My goal was only one this year, right. but I won two, and so um, so feeling pretty good. That's and excellent. How did your round four go? So I'm pretty good. I just want to comment real quick on that guy too. Is uh, he was really neat. So after my game, and I was kind of looking around, the tables were a little bit close together, and uh, his bag was towards the edge, and I ended up like turning around. My butt knocked over his bag. I felt horrible. Oh. I got down, picked up some of the pieces, you know, hopefully it wasn't too bad, but um, I wasn't there, but one of our other teammates commented, like, he's like, yeah, man, you got to kill my caster, and then you got to knock my models over in a jokingly manner. So, I mean, he was, he was really chill about it all. I felt so horrible, though. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, and again, in, in all of these, I think we, we run, I guess our captain rolled off and always won the die roll. That means um, we were always choosing we pairs. Were always choosing, and so we never chose tables. We always chose um, opponents or matchups. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of crazy. But, yeah, so mine ends up being uh, Battle of the Dans. So um, I go against Dan from their team. Um, like I said, again, I sit next to you. It's kind of funny. Round one and round four, we're both sitting, you know, table next to each other. And so he's playing Legion. I don't have experience in Legion either, but going well, except for day day one round one. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That, that was yeah primal terrors, and he and uh, Dan had no primal terrors in his list, right? So it was a completely different Legion. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, um, he had Thagrush and Lilith, and I had pretty much already kind of made up my mind. I was going to play Barnabas. It's the last day. We're you know again we're we're fun bracketing it, whatever. I kind of I can't go with a losing record because I'm two and one. So hey, mm -hmm. if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. Um, and thinking Barnabas, maybe I can swing since neither one of his had really good uh, mat or rat fixers. Um, I might just be able to bully the table and and um, make it so he just misses a bunch of stuff and I can overtake him. So we both drop in. He drops Lilith. And yeah, he had um, planned on dropping Lilith three, the one on the chariot, from the get go. Um, and he was afraid I was going to drop Maylock because he's like, man, Lilith doesn't have any game in the Maylock. I'm going to lose if he does that, but whatever, I'm just going to have fun. And I was kind of the same way. I was like, I felt I was kind of going to lose into Maylock, or if I played Maylock, I would lose into him. So, again, it's really interesting that the California meta and then our meta, that both of our games were completely thinking opposite. We're, we're, yeah. we're completely crossing each other. And so um, we go to roll, and we both roll, like, the same die number, right? So, like, okay, re-roll who goes first. So we roll it again, and I think, like, Again, he beat me like on one so I was like all right um there was a force on one side there's nothing really in the middle and so I think I might have chose the wrong side um but I saw a trench and everything I was like oh I'll take that side knowing that he has a bunch of eye of sight so he goes first is able to get up the board I had AD'd uh, Alton Ashley up a little bit Lilith just kills him I'm like oh well that's the thing and then um I move up a little bit, thinking I'm safe, you know, measuring out his threats, and so I get up there, and I'm thinking I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm okay. I end up casting my some all of my spells that I could, kind of thing, get my upkeep, right? Again, I'm kind of foreshadowing this one. You can see where this is going, and 
I'm thinking, okay, I'm good. I got my three shield guards, base or sack pawns. I've got Barnabas camp, you know, steady. He's camping a couple. He's camping two at this point. I should be all right. Um, if he gets within 10 inches, he's going to need like tens to hit me. I'm good. Well, he looks at it, measures it. takes like 15 minutes, you know, to kind of plan this all out. Um, so now we're on 2A. He ends up getting his, um, I want to say like his Archidon or something. It's something kind of fly that jumps in. Um, that has flare on it. He rolls, gets three shots with it. Okay, this is already looking bad for me. So he goes in, basically hits me. You know, I'm thinking, all right, I don't want to deal with, deal with flare. Hindsight again, playing the game, I should have taken his last hit. So his, his all three of his hits hit me, right? Um, or his shots hit me. He boosts them all, right? Um, and he doesn't roll anything lower than a 10 on boosted. So, okay, I'm already thinking, like, this is skewing off, all right? You should have at least missed one of these three. So my three sack pawns are gone. Um, again, I should have ate that last shot, but I didn't. Lilith then gets far strike, aims, um, feats, and stationaries me on the first on the first go. Right, just just nails me, and Ouch. so now I'm stationary. Her next two shots, auto. They don't do much damage though. Um, I'm sitting at arm twenty with spiny growth, so they do a little bit of chip damage. Okay, I might be able to survive this. Then his his next guys go in. Um, I can't remember what they what they are, but there's like one that has like an AOE blast, another that's just like a fiery blast, and so they're like POW 14s, POW 15s. I'm thinking, all right, dice off six, dice off five. He's going to be hitting me as long as he doesn't roll. You know, he's um, crit misses, so he nails me. I have I have to like transfer eight damage, right? So he rolls like a 14 on his dice. Okay, fine. His next one comes in, hits again, again. Rolls like four over. Um, oh, he had mastered his ice witches. We're able to puppet master these mm. next three. Um, and so he hits me again. Goes like four over. Um, so you know, rolls like a fourteen on his dice. I'm like, okay. Well, he's doing you know, really excellent at this time. Or yeah, a little over ten, I guess. And so he decides to puppet master it. Then ends up crushing another like six, seven damage. Right. Oh, Just wow. you know, none of his rolls went below a ten. It was kind of like little disheartening like come on something's got to give so i have to transfer that now i'm sitting basically no transfers he's got a couple more shots comes in again nails nails over does a good chunk of damage um i think yeah and then his third one or i guess fourth one tenth shot comes in again crushes over a 10 like again he didn't roll anything below a 10 on boosted dice yeah anywhere on there it's so, so hard like that yeah it's like again that's the game of dice right if it would have just a couple of those averages if they would have just gone under um it would have come down to his bolt thrower who may or may not have finished me off but anyway so now i got to experience a top of two assassination just against me oh so i think i played about you know eight minutes is what it took me for me to dawdle around on my first turn so again now our our swing kind of came a little bit closer i still played a lot more than you did over the weekend but yeah i felt that uh Man. Low. So I ended up going two and two through, throughout the tournament, which again I'll I'll yeah. take as my best record. And <laughs> both of us, yeah. yeah, and and both of us, uh, both of us experienced the top of two assassination. Right. Oh, what a weekend! Yeah, we talked about re-racking it and stuff, and it's just like ah, yeah. you know, with the day, and they wanted to close yeah. the hall pretty quick, but yeah. So as a team, so on the two rounds that we lost, we went two and three. Yeah, and we really we we really had a fight. In each one of those rounds, like we had the potential there yeah. to win, and then the two rounds that we won. So round three we went four and one, and round four we went four and one. Yeah. And uh, so really solid, um, just uh, team turnout. Um, and then, uh, and then we ended, um, like I said, two and two, and with the combination of CP control points as yeah. our as our tiebreaker. Uh, that put us in seventh. Yeah. yeah. So that is really cool. It's a really good showing. So I'm really proud of ourselves. And uh, next year we're definitely getting jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> just saying, definitely. So um, we um, we I just have a couple more things to really talk about, I guess, and just kind of wrap up. This is our first episode. Yeah. Might be going a little and long. And so uh, <laughs> we might be going a little long. Um, uh, so what uh, what's on your hobby desk, Dan? So right now um, I'm working on. I have an Ironback Spitter. Prime that I need to get done. My son kind of wanted a lava theme, so I ended up my lava crocs. Um, one of my posse is done in the lava, and my second dracodile I'm working on in a in a lava theme as well, and doing a whole trying to do a volcano base. So I'm kind of still working on that as totally something completely new. It's I'm figuring that one out. Nice. So it's taking me a little bit more time, um, and then I'm probably going to do the ironback spitter in a 
in a fiery red lava theme as well. Nice. So that's my that's my current nice. projects. I am starting a brand new army. I have started building Scorn. And so the, in the past uh, 36 hours, I've built um, like, I don't know, five or six war beasts, a uh, unit, three war casters, and wolves, I guess. Yeah. So it uh, looks like we're going to have a little bit of sun today. I'm going to prime a couple of those today. And I'm looking forward to that. But, um, well, good. Um, so uh, why don't we just go ahead and wrap up today? This is our first episode. We know we got to share a little bit about who we are. We shared um, about our experience at the I-5 team um, tournament or team championship. Um, for those War Machine players who are interested, there's another tournament in Portland. Um, and it's going to be on November 10th. And uh, you can go to the COG Collective uh, to in the events page to, to find out more about that information. But we are Spellstorm Miniatures. And uh, you can find us at uh, spellstormin.com. And so our aim is to give you content that, um, is, uh, that will inspire you to play more. And so we'll, we'll have a YouTube channel that you can watch some videos, some yeah. unboxings. We'll have some battle reports as well. Um, we have a blog that will be writing some hobby articles and, um, and some other things. And uh, just... You know, we we like to talk about the games we play, and um, and we get Dan and I we get together almost every Monday, right, yeah. and so uh, so most of the time we play games and things like that. But uh, we just want to share our hobby with you, and we know if you're sitting at home painting or or if you're driving and uh, and you listen to podcasts while you drive, that that something we said um, inspires you to pick up a new army or try something new on the table or. Play in a tournament for uh, for the first time. Yeah. Um, get out of your get out of your basement or get out of your hobby room. So, um, uh, Dan, any final thoughts? No, thanks for joining us. It's been, a, been an experience on this one. Yeah, very good. And uh, we'll just uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Bye now. <laughs> Bing 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 b